All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting in the Freedom Office. Uh, I want to apologize about not doing a video in the last couple of days. I've been preoccupied with uh, my brother's passing. Uh, it's been pretty devastating. As things kick if you're okay at the very beginning, but all of a sudden, wow, it hits. Uh, come to find out that uh, he had no life insurance either. So, and not only dealing with uh, empty bank accounts, uh, my beautiful uh, sister-in-law, is uh, having to deal with that. We've reached our goal of 10,000 and uh, by exceeding it up to $15,000, I wanna thank everybody who uh, was able to donate. Uh, the comments and the well wishing, I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna put the link down below. If you guys could spare a dollar, it'd be greatly appreciated. Let's see if we can push that thing up to $20,000. Uh, for those individuals who really pushed the limit, I greatly appreciate it. We're gonna be uh, doing a ceremony, full military honors on the 12th of February out in uh, Houston, Texas. Speaking of Houston, Texas, Miss Sheila Jackson Lee, that's her hometown. She is a congresswoman who is pushing for this HR 127. This has to be probably the most dangerous bill I have ever seen to our Second Amendment. And to go through it, which I did in detail, and we're going to talk about every one of the specific details here in a few minutes, but I do want to thank Freedom Inc. for kicking me in the ass to get this thing out. I thought I'd already done a video on this thing, and unfortunately I haven't. But HR 127 is very dangerous. I've got my other brother here who uh, is a big time Second Amendment guy, gun owner. Uh, and we were just going through it and shaking our heads at some of the things that are really out there. This is the most outlandish thing that I've ever seen. So what I want to do is I highlighted some of the details and I want to talk to you guys about it. Not only am I just going to read it, but I'm going to tell you exactly what my thoughts are. So this is going to be interesting. Ms. Jackson Lee, she introduced a ton of bills earlier. And I, I did a video on her previously and her little cohort out there in Houston. Uh, it just it blows my mind that these individuals are doing what they're doing. It's disgusting, and it is in total violation of our Second Amendment, which is the Second Amendment is a restraint to restrain the government to let them know that our right to bear arms shall not be infringed by them. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a purified violation, and it's so far-reaching. Let's talk about a few things. Let's do this. This act may be cited as the Sabika Sheik Firearm Licensing and Registration Act. I don't know what in the hell that means. But basically it is to provide for the licensing of a firearm and ammunition possession and the registration of firearms and to prohibit the possession of certain ammunition. Anything 50 caliber or above. Let's just go ahead with it like that. And also anything that holds more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Uh, registration is the biggest thing. Then we're going to be talking about the psychological evaluation. Not only that, but you're going to have to submit to a psychological evaluation of anyone who lives under your roof, as well as an interview with your spouse and any ex-spouse, which just, let's just say it, that opens its ass open wide for many, many things that come. The licensing of a firearm and ammunition possession, registration of firearms. Here we go. The Attorney General, through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, shall establish a system for licensing the possession of a firearm or ammunition in the United States and for the registration with the Bureau of each firearm present in the United States. My ass, okay? First thing, I can't tell you what you can do or what you can't do, but registration ain't on my list of things that I'll ever be doing. Firearm registration system, let's talk about this because this is extremely scary. Required information. Under the firearm registration system, the owner of a firearm shall transmit to the Bureau the make, model, and serial number of the firearm, the identity of the owner of the firearm, and the date of the firearm was acquired by the owner, and where the firearm is or will be stored, and a notice specifying the identity of any person to whom in any period of time during which the firearms will be loaned to the person. Guys, the federal government can't get out of its own way. How in the hell do you think they're going to be able to pull something like this off? This is huge. This is basically saying, all right, let's take the national, what is it, the Affordable Care Act and apply it to firearms, which is a total crock of shit. Uh, there's a deadline, three months, blah, blah, blah. But this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is probably, there's two parts that are really scary in it, one I've already mentioned before. The database. The Attorney General shall establish and maintain a database of all firearms registered pursuant to this subsection. The Attorney General shall make the contents of the database accessible, listen, this is horrible, to all members of the public. 
That's just great. I just want everybody in my neighborhood to know what the hell I got. Right? So they could just come on in here and rock and roll. All federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities, all branches of the United States Armed Forces, and all state and local governments as defined by the Bureau. No. Absolutely stupid. We're talking about letting anyone and everyone know what you have, what your property is. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care. No one's going to know what the hell I have. Now, I've got a couple things up in the back here, but that's just for fun. A general license. Okay, now here's another thing. Except as otherwise provided in a subsection, the Attorney General shall issue an individual a license to possess a firearm and ammunition if the individual has attained 21 years of age after applying for the license, undergoes a criminal background check conducted by the National Institute of Criminal Checks, yada, 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 yada. But <laughs> where, here we go. We're getting further into this. But um, say, for instance, you got granddad's musket up there antique firearm display license. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not all because we didn't forget about you guys. The attorney general shall issue to an individual a license to display an antique firearm in a residence of the individual if the individual is the holder of a license issued under some paragraph. Supplies proof that the individual owns an antique firearm described in the manner in which the firearm will be displayed. Guys, this is shit is exhausting and is absolutely disgusting. Here's another thing that just really chaps my ass. You've heard that before. Military-style weapons license. The Attorney General shall issue to an individual a license to own and possess a military-style weapon if the individual is the holder of a license issued under blah, blah, blah. After applying for a license under this subparagraph, successfully completes a training course right? Here we go. Certified by the Attorney General in the use, safety, and storage of the weapon. And that includes at least 24 hours of training and live fire training. Well, it's pretty simple to say if you've ever been in the military. Well, there you go. You've got your live fire training. But the individuals out there who haven't been in the military, this is a true crimp, an ax, a chop in their Second Amendment right. An absolute piece of shit. Because what can happen, ladies and gentlemen? Any firearm. that The one on top up here, that's a bolt-action rifle. That could be construed as a sniper rifle, military-style weapon. Psychological evaluation. This is another key element that is absolutely far-reaching beyond any means. A psychological evaluation is conducted in accordance with this paragraph if the evaluation is conducted in compliance with such standards as shall be established by the Attorney General. The evaluation is conducted by a licensed psychologist approved by the Attorney General as deemed necessary by the licensed psychologist involved. Whew. The evaluation included a psychological evaluation of other members of the household in which the individual resides. Could you imagine? Come on, honey. Let's go, everybody in the family. We got to go get our psych evals for our ability to exercise our Second Amendment. And again, ladies and gentlemen, that's something that just chaps my ass. I cannot believe that it's this woman... This stuff right here, straight off from Mom's Demand Action Now, every town for Newtown. This is exactly what they wanted. And all she's doing is regurgitating all the BS. And this goes all the way back to Joe Biden sitting there talking about, I won't ban fracking, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to regulate it to the point you absolutely cannot do it. And we're just going to put a hold on all permits now for well drilling. Absolutely crock of shit. This administration and the individuals who work with him are liars. And for people who voted for these jackasses, this is your responsibility. All right, so where were we? Members of the household in which individuals reside and as part of the psychological evaluation, the licensed psychologist interviewed any spouse of the individual, any former spouse of the individual, and at least two other persons who are a member of the family of or an associate of or the individual to further determine the state of the mental, emotional, and rela relational stability of the individual in relationship to firearms. Holy smokes. That in itself should have its own little bill because that's absolutely a far-reaching thing to have to rely on the, oh, I don't know, the assessment of a professional psychologist that you have the ability to act and <laughs> protect yourself. It blows my mind. I'm sorry. Denial of the license. Let's just go on. I'm not even going to worry about that. Uh, Attorney General should deny such a license if the individual or individual prohibited by law enforcement possession of an individual has hospitalized, mental illness, disturbance, diagnosis, including depression, homicidal, identification, suicidal, suicidal, attempted suicide or addiction or of a controlled substance. Basically, guys, that's the same shit that's on the Knicks. <sighs> okay. Firearm insurance. 
authorized for the lack of firearm insurance, the Attorney General may suspend a license issued under this subsection to an individual who has violated this section. How much is this license? Well, from what I can see, it's like $800 a year or something like that. And I'm not sure if that's per firearm or whatever. Renewal of the license. Guys, I couldn't understand a single part of this. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it's crazy. But here's one part that I did catch. Firearm insurance. The Attorney General shall issue to any person who has applied for a license pursuant to the subsection C and has paid to the Attorney General the fee specified in paragraph 2 in the subsection. So in other words, in an F order to get a firearms license, you have to have a firearm insurance. And the fee for this said insurance is $800. So that in itself, ladies and gentlemen, is a purified, I don't know, violation of your rights as a human being. I don't know. Yeah, they're going to call it a tax. They're going to call it a fee. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so they're talking about all the military style weapons or weapons that they consider to be military style weapons. Let's just say this. If it's if it has a barrel and a trigger and a stock and a, anything else, it's considered military under their book. And who knows? Uh, detachable magazines, deadlines for an establishment within one year to date of the enactment, the Attorney General shall prescribe final regulations to implement the amendments made in this subsection. All right, man, you want to talk about something that just blows me away. It shall be unlawful for a person to possess a firearm or ammunition unless the person is carrying a valid license issued under Section 932 and a case of the firearm owned by the person. The firearm is registered to the person under Section or blah, 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 blah. Or in the case of the firearm owned by another person, the firearm is so registered to such other person this and such other person is notified to the Attorney General, blah, blah, blah about a loaning or whatever. Hey, you know what? Uh, my big brother's sitting over there. I got some, uh, here's a bullet and I'm just gonna let give that to you, okay? Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That right there, there's a fine associated with that. And I'm gonna go over this. Whoever knowingly violates shall be fined not less than 75,000 and not more than 150,000 in prison, not less than 15 years and not more than 25 years. And there's a whole bunch of other little fines and shit like this, and it's absolutely incredible. Prohibition on possession of certain ammunition. Okay, it is unlawful for any person to possess ammunition that is 50 caliber or greater. Um, not many people know this, but a one ounce slug, if you guys, you win a prize, if you can tell me what caliber a one ounce slug is, a one and a quarter ounce slug. That's not a slug, but a slug. It shall also be unlawful for any person to possess a large capacity magazine. And I guarantee I can look right over here and I can see this right here. It would be unlawful to possess this or this. So what do you do? Oh, I guess, well, we're just going to go ahead and give him a, an opportunity to go ahead and turn it in. Okay, he loves, my dog loves magazines. He chews them up. So, yeah. And there are also uh, fees and uh, a bunch of stuff that goes in along with that. All right, so large capacity ammunition feeding device is defined and amended in this action insertion. The term large capacity ammunition feeding device means magazine, belt, drum, feed strip, or similar device that is, has a capacity of or that can readily restored or can be readily restored to accept more than 10 rounds of ammunition, but does not include or attach a tubular device. We're not going get, to get into that. Whoever knowingly violates this section shall be fined not less than $50,000 and not more than $100,000. I mean, come on, man. And then uh, it talks about years in jail, uh, not more than, not less than 10 and not more than 20. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my take on this whole thing. Is something like this going to pass? God knows what we have now. You know that there's uh, the vice president. She would love nothing more than to see every bit of this stuff pass. Not knows that the president, he would love to see that pass because he, he, he ran on that agenda. So here's the whole thing. For all the people out there, that'll never pass. It may never. But the mere fact that they're sitting there and making this public, that somebody actually submits a bill, it means they're after it. So with that being said, let me know what your thoughts are down below, guys. This is some superhuman shit, and this stuff cannot be tolerated. 
And for an individual to put something out there in public like this should be held for treason for violating our Bill of Rights. Let's go to Boy 32. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Guys, I'm pumped up, man. This is probably a really good video. I don't want to have to do any other takes. Well, let's just end them like this. Thanks, Freedom Inc. I appreciate that, man. Uh, it's been a long week, guys. My uh, brother was one of my best friends. And uh, losing him in the way, in the fashion in which we lost him was, uh, was hard. We've got a lot of cool people who are going to come out there. A lot of uh, Army folks. Uh, a lot of Rangers going to be out there. Uh, and it's going to be fun. Uh, to get the family together. My brother's in town. We're going to probably enjoy a cocktail or two tonight and do some reminiscing. All right. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. And I'm talking about the men and women in uniform who will support our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. Not this pile of crap. I'm KB32. Y'all be good. I'm out of here.